All right, Shalom. 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 Hey, first and foremost, we're going to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Rakapadash. Double honor to the true leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, Great Millstone, also known as GMS. Salutations to the most high men in the four corners of the earth, pushing his word, sincerity, and truth. And Shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai. We have a video today going into working, fighting, and laboring in this truth. So we're going to start here. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's start at verse 1 and then we jump down. Jump, read 1 and jump down. Yeah. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 starting at verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. Yep. And so to every to every season, there is uh to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Right? So and so the heavenly father works in a perfect balance, a state of mind, right? So if you labor, then you receive a recompense. If you commit good, then you receive a recompense. If you uh, commit evil, then you receive a recompense, right? The scriptures say that the, that the heavenly father, right? That he shall judge every work of man, whether they be good or whether they be evil, going into their, going into their deeds. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse nine. What profit has he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? So what profit doth he have? And what he labored there, because when you sum it up, the profit that you gain when you work for for, uh, for the Edomites on your job, you get what? You get a paycheck, whether it's a weekly check, a bi-weekly check, a bi-monthly yeah. check, or a monthly check. Th that's what you receive. You, you receive a profit. You receive a reward. You receive a recompense. So those that that that, that labor and strive as a prophet, as a messenger, as a, as a deliverer. Of the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, there's a profit that you're seeking to receive, that you're seeking to uh, 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 gain. But what comes along with that work, when you're slothful in business, then you're not striving for the masteries. When you're slothful in your business, then you're lacking in your performance. When you're lacking in your performance and you get evaluated, you get so many strikes in the workforce, right? You get so many strikes to where you ultimately get canned, you get terminated. And there's truth. When your fire, uh, spirit is kindled and you're on fire and then it dwindles down, but you reignite it, it dwindles down and you reignite it. The, the, those aren't X's in your so-called uh, 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 spiritual work labor force, right? Because you're steady striving in, in, in a momentous mind state to where you're steady continually doing something. But when you're slothful in business and you do absolutely nothing, then that's when you are at that point completely useless. You're uh, useless to the body, and you're useless to your Hawaii Shimmy Hawaii Shai because you're no longer that mouthpiece that he needs for him to be exalt exalted on planet Earth. Go ahead. Up. Yep. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Not slothful in business. So not slothful in business. What is your true business? The work of your Hawaii Shimmy Hawaii Shai. Right? Pursuant to the book of Matthew 20, I want to say it's 22 and 5, when it talks about going out there on, onto the highways and the byways, prophesying the word. Whether they hear, whether they forbear, going back into the book of Ezekiel, right? And because when you look at the elements of the world today, you look at the work structure of the world today, you look at so-called human civilization of today, everything's a joke. And you can read about that in the entire book of Ecclesiastes of how all things are pretty much vanity, vanity and lies. Because at the end of the day, prophecy is going to prevail. So prophesying the destruction of this place, Prophesying the salvation of the elect, prophesying the 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 the, uh, the evil, hurtful recompense that two thirds are going to receive. <coughs> That's the message that needs to be protruded out there, because the scriptures say that this uh, uh, word shall be preached into the four corners of the earth, and then the end shall come. Right? Go ahead. Fervent in spirit, so serve the Lord. Yes, yeah, so fervent in spirit means that you're on fire. You're on fire for your how about shim how shot. Not saying you won't have any cold points or any downward slopes or any slumps in your spirit, but you're fervent because your mind is always on your Hawaii Shimmy Hawaii you, You're always constantly just striving to not only be a better so called husband, a so called better father, a so called better worker. Because you, the scriptures say to, that, that whatever thou takest in thy hand to do, do it all thy might. So you're striving to, to, uh, to be great in your endeavors, you know? But being fervent in the spirit, it keeps you keeps you on a one track mind. 
a one track mind for the gold and for that uh, uh, a particular reward. I mean, how about Shim Hao Shah? You had a quick one? Yeah, I got a quick one for you. Like, you know, just a quick point, you know, just like look at the greats in basketball, like Jordan, you know what I'm saying? Kobe, you know, like they didn't score 30, 40 every single game. Yeah. They still made some type of point. They contributed, you know, mm -hmm. to, for the win of their team, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or for the betterment of their team. Right, right. Or even playing golf. When you look at golf, a hole in one is great, but sometimes you may go into the rough. Sometimes you may go into the brush. You, know, you may hit off in the trees. You can hit it there and still get to the hole before someone who hit it on the green every time. Come on, bro. Hey, just like the brother was saying, because you may not be able to score that 30, but you may um, increase your assist that game, or <coughs> play better defense, you know, or block out, so on and so forth. Hey, like Galatians 5 and 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the reason why I brought that out, because when you go, go into that term, um, walk, in the, um, in the Greek, it means how Hebrews regulate their life. So just like the brother was saying, you can't be hot or on fire all the time, but you can always be spiritual. You can always walk in the spirit. You can always walk in the spirit at all times. And because your mind, your state of mind is going to be consumed by righteous things. Right. You know, whether it's looking on the back of labels and what the ingredients are, or whether it's in treating your fellow brethren mm -hmm. and with the proper uh, uh, a brotherly love as mm -hmm. pursuant to the scriptures, you know. Just always being mindful and reminded that you have to reap. <laughs> and you know the wristbands I used to wear uh, a few years back. What would Jesus do? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but, hey, but that's in the book of Philippians. It right. said, "Let this mind be in you, which was which was also in Hamashiach Yahushua, mm -hmm. because he washed the disciples' feet, yeah. which means that he made himself subject to another." Right. This is James. Do, you do it. Yeah, yeah. This is James chapter four, chapter two, verse fourteen. What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and, and have not works? So your works have to be present. Go ahead. Can faith save him? Uh -huh. I'm skip down to 19. No, it's like, it's like. Verse 22. See if thou have faith rough with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. No, no, it's like, it's like, bro. Let me, let me take it up another uh, space. All right, go ahead. James chapter 3, verse 20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, see as thou hast faith wrought his works, and by works was his faith made perfect. Right, and because you believe, and believing is the first act, right? But based upon your works and what you actually physically can't commit, that's what puts the icing on the cake, you know? And that's how the Heavenly Father tried the man as, as, as gold is tried in the fire. And that's, how, and, and that's how you ultimately come out refined. But working isn't an easy task. You know, when you do something over and over and over again, you know, you become complacent, you stop paying attention to detail, yeah. you know, you come more prone to, to either having safety incidents or to, to, to actually misassembling what you're actually working on, you know? But you have to pay pay attention, you know? And you have to be fervent in spirit because that keeps you constantly alert. Yeah. You got something? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Revelation 14 and 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from his forehead. Yea, said the spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So your works are going to follow you. You know, you go into the spirit world, at any given moment, you died a righteous man, mm -hmm. you know? Hey, but it's all about that labor. It's all about that work because who's out there doing this, you know? The scripture says what? Who will rise up for me against the evildoers and the workers of iniquity? Who's out there doing that? So this, uh, 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 this work and this labor is what Paul was prophesying about. Well, I wouldn't say prophesying, but this is what he was going into when he was saying that I have fought the good fight of faith. Right. You know? Right. You know? I have finished my course by doing what? Doing what the Heavenly Father set him out to do. That's right. And I was going through the different uh, cities out there and, and, and preaching and prophesying mm -hmm. and continuing all the way up until the end. You know? But 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 it, it's, it's not easy because it's something that you have to constantly uh, uh, strive for. You because you really have to train. You have to train yourself into becoming better at this work, become better at this so-called job, you know, because this is really what it is. 
the Heavenly Father could do something differently, you know, to where you wouldn't have to prophesy, or you wouldn't have to study, you know. But the scripture said, what? The study showed, showed ourself approved. So there's particular things that, that he's asking and requiring of you that actually goes back into laborious work. That's right. Go ahead. This is Luke chapter 12, verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, find, shall find so doing. So blessed is that servant. When whom come? When Yahweh Shah comes back, shall find so doing. Go ahead. Hey, um, 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, reprove rebuke, export, with all long suffering and doctrine. And when you go into that term instant in the Greek, it means to be ready. So be ready, hey. We went into before the camera came on. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You know? Hey, because if your house shot's coming back as a thief in the night and you're not prepared for it, then you're going to be taken as a thief in the night. But if you're constantly watching and praying as the scriptures command us to do, then you will be more ready, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, during that time, and you won't be uh, caught off guard. That's right, bro. Because who, who else out there is paying attention? Who else out there is watching besides the watchers? That's right. Besides the prophets? Besides those that are laboring for your how about shit how shot, you know? And because your faith has to be so concrete that you know and believe that your how about shit how shot is, 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 is going to save his elect. And you have to be pretty confident in what your acts upon planet Earth are for you to, to, to put yourself in that position of being of the hopefully elect. Go ahead. In Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah being warned of the Most High. And you can read that whole book of Hebrews, starting from the uh, 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 from the top, and okay. hey, going into great uh, uh, men of old and how they proclaimed that faith and how it was exuded uh, through their actions. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. By faith, Noah being warned of the Most High of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. And we read in the book of Peter's how the earth is reserved unto fire. Okay. So that's something that's not seen as of yet, yeah. but being moved with fear. Who wants to get burned up? Right. Who wants to get burned alive and it's all judgment by Yahweh mm -hmm. Shimon So we're moved with fear to do what? Act upon that. Okay. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Yep, which is by faith. And because you can't have particular faith in something and not do anything to obtain it. Right. You know? You know? You got to be able to uh, see it. Believe it and then do something about it. Go ahead. You, you had some more on that? No, I'm good. Continue on that. No, this is it. They gave me John uh, 7 and 38. Let me get what you got. Right. You know, so right, uh, 37 16. You, you give me that first, Okay. This is Sirach 37 verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Right. And so when it comes to particular things in your walk and in your journey, when you are uh, 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 doing this work, some things may not be beneficial mm -hmm. to, to your job. So you got to, to, to cross those particular things out, get counsel on, on those particular things, because it's just like a job has an HR department, human resources. They do what? Counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they give you the, the policies, the processes, and the procedures on if this is beneficial to, uh, to your job duties and responsibilities, or if this is outside of a, a, a company policy guidelines, because this is a this is the the, the, the grandeur corporation. This is the corporation of all corporations. This is the heavenly father's business. This is the heavenly father's work. This is his company, you know. And we are and, and we are his employees because he's going to do what he's going to pay us. And we're all laboring for what penny. one penny. That penny is the kingdom of heaven, man. And to be joint heirs with our big brother, Yahweh Shai. All right? Yes, more. Yes, more. Yes, more. Yes, This is um, Hebrews 6 and 9. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Which he have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And continue to do, uh, uh, and, and continue to minister. So the Heavenly Father is not unrighteous, man. He's not unrighteous to forget this. He's going to remember this. That's why 
a great majority of the times that we see chariots are either during camp or right after camp because the heavenly father is well pleased in that work mm -hmm. you know because whether there are droves and masses of people out here that doesn't matter the heavenly father is always occupying a small sanctuary he's always occupying a small number when you look at our other apostles of a, a, a current date on 34th and 7th one of the, the grand the greatest crossroads in, 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 in the United States of America, how many souls were saved from thousands and thousands and thousands of people going back from 2007 up to uh, 2018 when they departed from that place? You know, not many. I got you to back up about the chariot. It's just a little more, bro. It's a, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. And that's a commandment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every one of you to show the, the, uh, the same diligence. Time. Just striving for the master unto death. Amen. Just to prove your point about the chariot, Matthew 17 and 1. And after six days, Yahweh shall take Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart. And it was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahusha, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Verse 5, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him yep. and we will be as confident and do that time of judgment you know as, as the heavenly father was as confident in his son mm -hmm. you know we want to be looked at as well done mm -hmm. job well done even something as simple as hearing that word in a carnal state here on earth it's sometimes it's, yeah. it's satisfying to the, the so-called spirit, man, yeah. so-called soul. Mm -hmm. right. and, he came in a, and he came in a chariot to prove it, you know, just right. like you were saying about the apostles with the chariot. Right. Because even if you go into the book of Chronicles, when, um, you know, we were praising the Lord yep. and, and the Levites were singing, That's right. a chariot came out. That's know? right. It's an rare occasion, but it does happen. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the Heavenly Father getting, getting up close and personal, yeah. you know. And he's gonna do it again, man. Hey, hey, you just gotta hold on, gotta hold fast. Let me go in with this one here. All right, so get yours when you get there. Hey, John 4 35, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then come harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for there are whites already to harvest. You know, when you get into that term white, it means like ripening. So, you know, a lot of times when your fruit is good, it's when it's in a condition of being ripe. And then when you go into that term harvest, it means gathering the elect into the kingdom of heaven. So that's what we're doing now by being instant, in season and out of season, out of season and loving this laborious work mm -hmm. based on the spirit of Yahweh Shah has placed on us. Yeah, cause like what B said earlier, um, you know what I'm saying? But uh, how you say, hey, not laborious work because at the end of the day, most of his words are not going out void, yeah. man. It don't matter if uh, people standing here or not, man. Yeah. Most of our words still getting out there, man. And who is that great? You, you read the book of Second Ezra, how the Heavenly Father has kept him one great from the cluster. Mm -hmm. And you just went into how uh, 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 when something is right, yeah. it's ready for what? It's ready for the plucking. That's right. It's ready for the picking. Yeah. This is John chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that keeps you fervent, that keeps you working, keeps you laboring, it keeps you steadfast and fighting, you know, and not as one that beat the air, but for a true cause, you know. And so most I willing the edification was there. So next time we say Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.